In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Nginx Proxy Manager. Nginx Proxy Manager is used to expose web services on your network. It offers free SSL certs with Let's Encrypt. It's designed with security in mind and perfect for home networks. Let's get Nginx set up. And before you start spamming the comments on how to properly pronounce Nginx, let me save you the time. Check out this clip from the creators themselves. How do you pronounce Nginx? That's like a big one. I mean, I've heard uh, uh, many, many, many things. So um, first- I've left a link to the full video in the description if you wanna check it out. It's got some pretty crazy pronunciations for it. But before we get started, if you haven't joined our Discord server yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. On to Nginx Proxy Manager. So I created this diagram to kind of explain what Nginx does and, and how it works. We'll start down here with the user section. A user is going to go type in their web browser a certain you know, web address. In this case, we're going to go to radar.alientech42.com. So I'll type in that address. It's going to go off and hit a DNS provider. They're going to look up that record. and They'll see if there's a, a record that exists. In this case, it's going to be a, a C name or an A name record. And then from there, it's going to forward it over to the WAN IP address that it's set to from your DNS provider. In this case, it's going to go to our home WAN IP address. Once it gets there, your router will then look at the traffic that's coming in and say, what am I going to do with this? If it's something on port 80, we're going to have it send it to port 1880. If it's coming in from port 443, then we're going to forward it over to port 18443. If it's anything other than that, it's basically just going to hit a firewall and bounce back and be like, nope, not going in. If it is one of those two ports, it's going to pass it through and it'll pass it to the Nginx proxy manager. Once it hits Nginx, it's going to say, do I have a proxy set up for Radar or Vault Warden or, or whatever you're looking for? In this case, you know, Radar. And it's going to go, oh, yes, I do. So it's going to forward that traffic off to the actual location for it. In this case, it's going to be, you know, our demo server address with its own port number for Radar, 7878. If you spelled it incorrectly and it's Radar with one R, it's going to come in and go, uh, nope, don't have that, and just reject it and kick it back. Same thing happens if you're searching for, you know, your image server. You type in image.aliantech42.com. It's going to hit it, hit the router, says yes, pass it on since it's, you know, port 80 traffic. It's going to pass it through. Nginx proxy manager is going to look at it and go, okay, that one goes to 8089. And it's going to separate where the traffic is going. It's kind of it in a nutshell. It's just a way to expose your inner Docker containers without exposing everything out to the internet. So you're locking it down to you know one or two ports. If you just wanted to do port 80, you could do that. Or just port 443, you could do that. But typically traffic comes into both those ports, so I use both of those. It's kind of the standard setup. Now let's go get it installed. Over on our Unraid server, I'm gonna head over to the apps tab and I'm gonna search for Nginx Proxy Manager. And this one here with a little rocket ship I've been using for years and it's been pretty solid. So I'm gonna continue with that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit install on that. First thing I'm going to do is change the network type from bridge to our custom alien proxy network. Then the next thing I'm going to do is scroll down and open up the show Docker allocations, and we're going to search for a port availability. So I'll double click on the first port, control F, it finds one. So that one's clear. Same with the second one. That's good. And the third one. These are all good on my demo server, but if you happen to have yours used by a different application, then just go ahead and change to an available port, and then we'll carry on. Whatever ports you come up with, make sure that you remember these because we're going to have to forward those in our router later on. Back at the top, you'll notice under note here, the last part of it says, after fresh install, the default username and password to connect to the management interface are admin at example.com and the password is change me. We'll need those later on. So now we're going to scroll down and hit apply. While that's installing, come join us in Discord. I left a link in the description. Now that that's installed, go ahead and hit done. Next, we're going to go up to the Docker tab, find the Nginx proxy manager, and we're going to turn the auto start to on. Now let's go over to the icon for the Nginx proxy manager and click web UI. Like I said a moment ago, we need the login credentials. So it was admin at example.com and the password is change me. Now we need to change the default user information. So the full name here, you can put in whatever you'd like. I'm just going to call this, oh, let's go with alien nickname. We'll call it demo. And then for the email address, you got to put in a, a real email here. So for an email, we'll put in demo at aliantech42.com and we're going to hit save. And the email account needs to be a real account. 
because the Let's Encrypt cert service will send you email notifications there. All right, let's put in the current password, which was change me. So put in a new password and then confirm it and then hit save. And you're in. And if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe while you're down there. So the installation part's pretty easy. Now we have to go through the rest of the setup. But before we get started setting up Nginx, make sure you have a CNAME or an A record created at your DNS provider site. I use Namecheap for all my domain registering and hosting. They have great prices and even better service. You should check them out. If you use Cloudflare and need help, check out my Cloudflare video after this one. Both links are in the description. I'm going to head over to Namecheap and show you how to do it there real quick. Once logged in, I'll make sure I'm in the domain list and then I'm going to find the domain I'd like to manage. And over on the right, we're going to click manage. Across this top banner bar here, I'm going to switch it to advanced DNS. And here under host records, we need to create a CNAME or an A name record. And I'll show you how to do both. So we'll click add new record. Let's do an A record first. We'll use this one to point to our radar server. So let's call it radar. Then for the IP address, you need to put in your WAN IP address. And if you don't know how to get that, you can just open a new tab and go to what's my IP, what is my IP.com. And it'll show it right in the top here. You can copy it there. Go back to your advanced DNS tab and paste that in. The TTL or time to live, you can just leave on automatic and then hit the check mark to save changes. Now let's create a CNAME record. Go to add new record. I'm going to drop down and find CNAME record. The host, let's call this one, let's call it radar without the double R just to keep them different. And the target here will be a DNS entry that you've already got set up that already points to your server. So in this case, let's go with, we'll just do the one above. So radar zenabs.com followed by a period. Once again, TTL is automatic and just go ahead and hit the check mark to save. And then these records, whenever you make it a DNS entry, they have to propagate out across the internet and they say it'll take up to, you know, 28 to 48 hours. But in my experience, it's more like a half hour. So it's, it's usually a lot quicker. And if you want to check and see if it's populated or not yet, you can always go to dnschecker.org. So let's head over there real quick and I'll show you how it works. So under DNS check here, you put in the DNS entry that you created. So it's in our case, radar.zenabs. Dot com and I press enter and look there it is all green check marks it's already propagated and that was only like five minutes so real quick you can also do a check for the other one once again that one's done too quick and easy all right we'll go ahead and close that site now don't need it anymore with that done the next thing we need to do is go to our router and forward the ports and since every router is different I'm going to refer you to portforward.com to check out how to do it on your own router I'll show you how I have it set up in my ubiquity gateway so here's my first entry so for the name, I've got Nginx HTTP to 1880, which is the port number we had set up in the container for all the port 80 traffic. You'll see here that I have the rule enabled and it's going from any, so any device on port 80 and the forward IP, we're setting that to forward to the demo server's IP address. For me, it's the 10.0011. And then the forward incoming port is 1880. That's the one that we had set up within the container. And if you'd changed it, then you'd want to make yours match that, whatever you'd changed it to. And for protocol, I have mine set to TCP only, but you can change it to both. So it covers both TCP and UDP. And that's one of them set up. Then the other one I'd set up, the name is Nginx HTTPS to 18443. We've got it enabled, coming from any address on port 443, forwarding it to our demo server. The forwarding port number is the same one that we had done in the container for the HTTPS traffic. In this case, it was 18443. The protocol, once again, TCP is what I have, but you can have it on both. At this point, we're ready to set up our first proxy in Nginx. Let's jump back there. We're gonna to go to our dashboard and we'll come back here in a moment and go through all these options and, and what everything does. But for now, let's go down to proxy hosts. We're gonna click on to that option and we're gonna add a proxy host. You can do it here or in the top right. The first option, domain names, we're gonna put in a domain name or a group of names if you have more than one pointing to the same application. So in this case, I'm just gonna put in radar two R's dot your domain name. In this case, it is zenabs.com. And then right below there, you have to click the add option for it. Otherwise it, it just doesn't show up. So click add. Then a scheme, we'll leave that on HTTP. The forward host IP address, we put in our server IP address here. So in this case, it's gonna be 10.0.0.11. And then the incoming port that we want it to go to. So in this case, since it's going to our radar server, radar's port is 7878. So once again, this IP address here is pointing to wherever your radar server is. And then the port number is the port for your radar server. And for cache assets, I'm going to turn that on in case there's any kind of pictures or anything that, you know, is a lot of media. It just helps to kind of save bandwidth and speed it up just a little bit. So we'll turn that on and then block common exploits. 
it's always a good idea to block exploits so let's turn that on web sockets that's not really needed for the radar site but if you have something that does need it it's there you can turn it on let's jump over to the ssl option under ssl cert we're going to click into that field and if you have already a ssl cert in there you can just choose it here we don't have one so we'll click on request a new ssl cert we want to force ssl we gonna turn that on and then http2 support we'll turn that on as well if you use hsts then enable that if you don't or you don't know then make sure just leave it off i'm gonna leave mine off then we need to put in an email address for the let's encrypt and like i said before we need a legit email that's why i said to put one in so this account i created that one's good to go last thing i do is agree to the terms of service and then hit save and now nginx proxy manager is going out and talking to the let's encrypt service getting an ssl cert for you and then assigning your email and all that stuff to it looks like that's done and it's it's already online and then to test it out over here on the source you can click on the name there and it takes you to the site oh look new subscriber to the newsletter good time to promote it if you're not a subscriber yet i'll leave a link in the description why don't you go check it out all right so you log in with your credentials and i believe this was demo and super secret so there you go it works so now you can browse the domain name from inside or outside your home and get back to your application in this case it was radar so let's go back to nginx proxy manager and i'll give you a quick tour so we'll go to the dashboard tab first and here you've got your proxy hosts let me refresh that there we go so the first option is proxy hosts we've already been there but you go into it and it shows you you know your proxy host that you've got set up you can add new host here same process that we just did we'll go back to dashboard redirection hosts this is most often used to redirect from an old site to a new one most time you're not going to need it but it's nice that it has it in case you do need it if you look up here in the top right there'll be a little question mark if you click on that drops down expands shows you kind of more of what it is and what it does close that one go back to the dashboard next option is streams for streaming it's going to forward all the traffic to another machine instead of just your server you can have it point to whatever machine you want all the traffic is going to go to that a lot of times it's used for games and that kind of stuff so if you click on the question mark up here it says a relatively new feature for nginx a stream will serve to forward tcp udp traffic directly to another computer on the network if you're running game servers ftp or ssh servers it can come in handy close that go back to dashboard last one is 404 hosts here you can create your own custom 404 hosts or you know page not found top right again a little question mark kind of explains more about what it is i'll close that all right back to the dashboard that's the last item there hosts is the same thing that you've already got here so we can just skip over that one quick and easy access lists so if you have an application or a site that does not have its own authentication then you can add your own authentication layer through nginx before it gets to the site so to do that you click on add access list give it a name we'll just call it you know demo something we're going to do satisfy any then we'll go to authorization we're going to create a username here we'll call it alien and for password we'll make that alien as well then to run access we've got the option to whitelist and blacklist so for allow i'm going to put in just everybody so all if this was in production i would lock this down to a certain group then we'll hit save oh warning bad password obviously i'll be deleting this now that we have the access list created we can go apply that to any proxy host that we've got so let's let's jump over to the host real quick and i'll show you that go to our proxy host we'll add it to the zenabs one here three dots edit then under details the very bottom here access lists right now it says publicly accessible we're going to change this to our demo one that we just created then you hit save it'll apply i don't need this it's already got its own authentication built in so i'm going to turn this back just to publicly accessible and hit save and just to make sure it works yep right in good deal all right back to where we were at that was access list let's jump over to ssl certs this will show you all of the ssl certs that you've got created right now i've only got one in here so pretty pretty empty users tab oh you can create your custom certs here too you just click on add ssl cert let's encrypt you can add a custom one if you've got one that you've purchased somewhere else you can add that into the to the nginx proxy manager but you can go to let's encrypt same thing use the your email you can use a dns challenge if you want that's more advanced i'm not going to go into that right now we'll agree to terms of service domain names now this is something i found out the other day that you can create more than one at a time so you can have it point to the same same site different hosting names so let's say i have you know radar.zenabs.com and you add that one in then you can add in another one let's say i don't know make something up here um radar alien.com something like that 
add that in. And when you go and create that, it'll create a cert for both of those. So it'll validate that site on either one of the domain names. I don't need this, so I'm gonna cancel out. On to users. Here's where you can create more users if you'd like. Once again, top right corner, add user, same normal user creation process. Then audit log, it's kind of neat. Keeps track of pretty much everything you've ever done. Keeps track of history of you know all the stuff that's happened within Nginx. Search created, updated, and deleted. Proxy hosts created, updated, and deleted. And the same with access lists. And then finally, we have settings. If you're browsing around and you hit your Nginx container and it doesn't have the site listed, you can choose what you want displayed. Right now it's got a congratulations page, but over on the, the three dots here, you can go to edit. You can select a 404 page, no response, 444 page, redirect it somewhere else, or your own custom page. It's kind of nice. Once you've got your selection, go ahead and hit save. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Then check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.